This is the 21st century and we need to redefine revolution. This planet needs a people's revolution, a humanist revolution. Revolution is not about bloodshed or about going to the mountains and fighting. We'll fight if we are forced to. But the fundamental... So this started off as a thought. Um, myself and Umbreen and Ayet, who we were both TEDx speakers last year, thinking of reimagining Shades as a larger piece. And then she came to me, she was like, can you do it at Fort York? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so uh, figuring out how to animate the space, I had emailed Wayne, and then as somebody that I know that can shoot dance, I only trust Lucius. And so I was just like, let's bring this brainchild together. And, and it was through, you know, thick and thin, we've been going through the trenches to figure out what this piece is. And I think the beautiful thing is that it's still showing itself to us. And it's really exciting to see just where this piece will continue to grow into. Yeah, I remember we walked in, the three of us, into Fort York, thinking we were going to potentially stage a different dance piece walked in there experiencing that fort again in this current climate where a lot of us are thinking about our own safety and the safety of our communities, it was hard to not be more responsive to this particular moment, right? Like we thought, what does this actually mean? How can we not have a dialogue with this space that's more direct? I think that, you know, that, that moment struck all of us because there's a certain, you know, sort of palpable energy of walking into the fort. Um, I used to live in that area and, you know, most of the people who uh, live around me think it's a dog park. <laughs> and, you know, you see people doing yoga and whatnot and you realize it's a grave site. You know, this is a site where colonial violence actually took place. It was this barrier, this protection. There's so many things that have changed about the space over time as you know, it started to become gentrified and these buildings around it. But what that space still means and still sort of represents, there is a certain energy and power to it. And so you know, in thinking about what this piece was going to be and exactly how it was gonna be driven, you know, this idea of, you know, having the militia of black women entering this space and thinking about what that means, you know, is this a reclamation of this space? Is this recontextualizing it? But it is an imagining of like this space that was meant to protect the people is now belonging to this group that is now inhabiting it. And that is referencing the souls that were once there. It's referencing, you know, the future of what this space can be. And it's, you know, only could be told through dance, really. Yeah, and it's something really interesting about dance. I think that the wider uh, world really just sees dance as a forgotten art. The way that people view words, they don't bring the same type of value towards dance. Shifting people's minds in terms of how dance can really breathe a narrative. It was the first form, like that was our rituals. Those were the spaces in which we held ceremony. Those were the spaces in which that we were able to celebrate ourselves as black people, as African people. So I find it very necessary to want to inject that back into these spaces, inject that back into the world to remind ourselves that like dance is still a healing. It's a healing, there's a purpose to it. As we animate these historic spaces, that is the only way that we can move forward. You know, people need to be able to see it and art and dialogue, you know, we have to be able to talk about it. So how do we, how do we find those spaces where we can come together and talk? Yeah, I mean, that would be a victory, right? If it's a, if it's a piece that folks dialogue within the city. 100%, you know, and I think that, that this is the time that people are starting sort of to question spaces and starting to question these monuments and question these things that just exist in your daily life. You know, these places that you pass, these, you know, buildings that you go through, these systems that you've been a part of your entire life and somewhat complicit in, you know, their operation. It's like, how do you now start to, to rethink, like, what does this even mean? What am I a part of? And is this even right? And even with that, there's like a, the Adinkra symbol, Sankofa, mm -hmm. you know, in order for us to move forward, we have to look back. So it's like we have to go back into the spaces of our past, of our history, 
in order to give us the vision to help us reimagine that future. In order for us to move forward, we do have to look back, acknowledge it, and figure out what is there that can serve us to take us forward. You know, we, we proudly say diversity, our strength in Toronto, right? But, you know, to actually tell every member of, of the city that we mean that, you have to make sure that that is also spoken about in the largest cultural institutions, what stories are being told, what stories are being honored in all of our cultural heritage sites, what's being preserved. This is integral because this is part of our, our, our mental makeup, right? We walk past these, these spaces all the time. And if we're only seeing a, that diversity on subways and not in our largest cultural institutions and not in our cultural heritage sites that, we're, that the city's all investing in, what is that saying to our city? How is that creating a dialogue? To me, this is integral for a healthy city. When I heard about this project with the city and awakenings and what, 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 what the intention is, we were really excited to get involved because I do believe that as an artistic institution, civic leadership, civic, civic building, working together with the city to tell the stories, not just internally in the theater, but through our city. Because how else are we going to tell the community, those who don't go to theater, who those who do, that these spaces are for you? We both had the aha moment of like, this is the song. This is the song. To bring this piece, to bring these words, you know? And I give such great thanks to Debbie Young and East Africa and this poem by Asada Shakur and hearing her speak it as a call to action these words, these lyrics that she so beautifully speaks just give these 15 women such a base to stand on. And these words and this song was, was that platform for that. What's a line in, you know, in, in the song that has stood out for you or stood out for you in terms of like how you see yourself in this and, the, and what, you know, what you want to share with the world? Are you willing to sacrifice? I think I think about that for myself, you know? You'd have to not accept a lot of things to really get to the heart of, of making things right. For me, it's in order to first change the system, we must change ourselves, you know? Those words, like, have rang through my body on so many occasions because I think as we're looking at this time, seeing seeing the fact that it almost feels like, you know, you're standing at the base of a mountain and you're just trying to figure out how on earth to get up. Sacrifice and change are, you know, absolutely resonate with me. Um, there's one very quick part in the song where um, Asada talks about the revolution being creative. Mm. And that always gets me. When you look at the revolutions that are happening today, it's not, it's not based on money. You know, it's not coming from a place of empower. It's coming from a place of disenfranchisement. And so people need to be creative. We need to be creative in the ways that we organize. We need to find new paths. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that, you know, if we don't have the, the, the time, the resources, the, you know, the, the money, the capital, um, the voice, you know, how do we get creative to start to create um, community around change? So let's talk about self-preservation through this time and our own spiritual healing. Hmm. Well, for me, because of the work that I've been doing, you know, it started with shades in terms of understanding what it means to create art and healing in the same space. When I was uh, building this, I was really trying to think because it's like as a healer, you're really trying to understand how it is that you can facilitate the room, how you can hold space for people. There's always going to be things that come up, you know, even just the thought of having 15 black women in a space doesn't happen all the time, you know, and understanding that that idea of worthiness is always going to come up. And so... For me, a big thing with my practice is making sure that I have the right people in the room. As we're ushering in a new wave of art and healing, I think it's really important for people to know that we can, we can create art differently. We can bring these spiritual aspects of ourselves into these spaces and not feel like that's something that we have to check at the door. We can talk about these things. Even if other people may not understand, we can still find a respect uh, collectively to know that I may not understand it, 
but I can respect it and know that I can still benefit from that and know that there's people that are working in my favor. Yeah, I mean, I, I really resonate with that because I think that, um, you know, creatively, there's so much work that happens before the work happens. There's so much just like ancestral, personal, um, you know, weight that we are all carrying that sometimes, you know, before we can get to the moment of even talking about what this is, we need to work through all the things that were and all the things that still exist. And so, you know, for me, especially on this, this project, having those moments when it's like, you know, okay, it's not just we're, you know, rehearsing and all of you learn the moves and we're out. There's moments of just dialogue. There's moments of unpacking. There's moments of healing. There's all these really meaningful moments so that whatever people take from seeing this on screen, the group that was actually together on site, they've already experienced their revolution. They've already experienced, you know, what, what this collective visioning can, can look like and can be. Yeah, and collective visioning, um, you know, that has been... That's been a part of traditions for African people all over the world for a long time. I mean, to get through struggling, you know, to get through some of the struggles, we've had to have a faith, we've had to have a spirit, spiritual practice, and um, and we've had to sometimes vision things that were not that didn't that were not in existence yet, you know, um, which is where we have you know black black futurism or even where how we got to these costumes or how we got to the image. We didn't pull it from a reference, you know, we pulled it from something that we had to imagine because we need to have aspiration. Our creativity is our, is ne- is a, it's a necessity. We've had to, to survive because you have to imagine the world that you want to live in. Um, and so I think this was very helpful for me personally because when George Floyd first died, and even before that, as soon as COVID hit and there was all kinds of abuses that were happening, I was just f- feeling such stress and, and, and almost helplessness, you know, trying to figure out what to do. And I sort of, there was a numbness because I had to just do the work I was doing, but it was hard for me to, to enter that part of, 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 of my spiritual sadness of what was happening in the world. And this piece helped me confront it. Yeah, and I think that that's how we get unstuck, you know? because I feel the same way, like especially um, within that moment of George Floyd, like feeling so angry and so sad, you know, just like immense debilitating feelings. And it's like, how do you actually move through that? You know, how do you allow yourself to experience these moments of, of anger, these moments of sadness, you know, these moments of loss, and then turn that into something and start to transform that into something that uplifts. Because we all are looking for ways to do that. We're looking for ways to hold each other, that we, we acknowledge that this is a complicated time and people are trying to feed each other. And I think being able to do this project and give people a chance to feed each other, people just, they came with everything and more. There's a need for this. There's a need for a healing, for an addressing the acknowledgement of mental health and what the toll that this time is taking on all of us. When I say us, I mean, you know, the whole community, everybody in the community, not just black, not just black people, but everyone. Yeah, because this vision that I have, you know, my vision has 15 black women, but it's, you know, it's a question to the community. It's like, who's in your vision? You know, who are the people that help you manifest this change, this revolution of love? You know, if you had to put 15 people to be at the gates with you, walking through the gates, who would you have? I also think of it as like 15 pieces of you, mm-hmm. you know, and that, because I, you know, Asada does call so clearly for, it, it's everybody from every culture, every creed, and that is the only way that real change is gonna happen, is that we all actually can rely on each other and that we, it takes each person, and if we can't all do it together, then, it's, it's just not going to happen. And so, yeah, I see, I see her voice through you and through you multiplied in this way and that even though she is this one small character in front of this huge fort, she can multiply herself through this imagination and through this power. And I think, you know, just it, 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 hopefully it inspires anyone to feel that way. This is a piece that's for everyone. You know, this, this is a piece that I think, um, you know, many communities beyond, you know, a black community can see themselves in, 
um, you know, in speaking to the text, in speaking to that sacrifice that we need, you know, to build this better future. And so, you know, I hope that people ask those questions. I hope that people feel inspired, you know, by the text and by the movement um, to start moving from a place of, you know, complacency into action and change and joy and celebration in what the revolution can actually look like. It's medicine, like all stories are. It's a piece of empowerment to say, you dream it, you think it, you have already contributed something into the energy of positivity and change. And I think just seeing her alone on a normal day in Toronto, approaching history in this way and reigniting it, reigniting that, that spirit of, that was able to galvanize people to sacrifice their lives, that kind of calling, it feels overwhelming that one person could even ask for that, but she does. And I just feel like, hopefully, that empowers everyone to think about what we think about, what we put our minds towards, what we put our energy towards. That, that's the first step in change, you know? Acknowledging truth, first step in change. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It's, I think it's, it's, an, it's, it's empowering that individual people power. Hmm. I want people to, to see possibility to see the fact that the fight isn't over and that we have everything that we need to be able to move forward. And that they can look at this and just continue to see hope, continue to see the fact that there's, there's so much on the horizon, you know? And that, um, and it's gonna take us stepping into each other's shoes to be able to get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And letting each other in to yeah. see what's, what we're all really thinking, right? <laughs> that's, that's what people are saying. We're like, Let's have a real conversation now, which is hard, you know, but people are asking for it and we all have to step up to the plate. Yeah. Let's have a real conversation. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's a good ending. <laughs> that's the end. Revolution is love. love, love, love.